Hello, fellow Toastmasters. My name is Laura Olson, and I want to welcome you to Contest Basics for Contestants. I am part of the District 14 Speech Contest Training Team, and we'll be providing you with the training and question and answer sessions to make sure you are prepared for the upcoming speech contest season. Before we start, I want to remind you to download the 2022-2023 Speech Contest Rulebook, which is available on the Toastmasters International website. Toastmasters made it easy to find any updates to the rules by placing a diamond next to them. Are you ready to get started? Today's session will cover eligibility, contestant forms, speech subject, and general procedure. In order to be eligible to participate in any speech contest, you must be a paid member of the club that you are representing in the speech contest. The club that you're representing must be in good standing, which means that the club must have at least eight members and three of those members must be renewing from the prior period. You must maintain your eligibility at all levels of any contest. If it was determined that a contestant was ineligible to compete at any previous level, the contestant must be disqualified. The eligibility rules are the same for all types of speech contests, international, humorous, table topics, tall tales, and evaluation. However, there was an addition to this year's rule book for eligibility in the international speech contest. The contestant must have earned a certificate of completion in levels one and two of any path. This means your completion is showing in Basecamp as approved by a Basecamp manager, but does not need to have been submitted as an award through Club Central. To your left, you will see an example of a certificate of completion, and below it is a snippet from Club Central where we submit our educational awards. The only exception to this rule is for a charter member of a club that was chartered less than one year before the club contest, and the club must have officially chartered before the area contest. Let's talk about who is not eligible to participate in any Toastmaster speech contest. The incumbent international officers and directors, region advisors or region advisor applicants, District officers whose terms expire on June 30th, and those officers are District Director, Program Quality Director, Club Growth Director, Administration Manager, Finance Manager, Public Relations Director, Division Director, Area Director. Immediate past District Directors. District officers or candidates for elected positions for the term beginning the upcoming July 1st. Members serving as a contest official or presenter. These would be voting judges, tie-breaking judge or chief judge at the same contest type in which they'd be competing beyond the club level in any district. It also includes timer, ballot counter, sergeant at arms or other contest official role for the same contest in which they would be competing. This is a new requirement, which was updated in the rulebook for this year as denoted by a diamond. Presenters of educational sessions, a contest chair, contest master, or an event committee chair for an annual conference are also ineligible to compete. The winner of the World Championship of Public Speaking. A contestant may not compete in more than one area speech contest of any given type, even if the areas are in different divisions or districts. Let's talk about the forms that speech contestants must complete prior to the contest and other resources to assist them in preparation for the contest. The first form is the Speaker Certification of Eligibility and Originality form. This form must be completed for each contest that you're participating in, and should you progress to the next level, from club to area, et cetera, a new form is required. You will be instructed to give the completed form to either the chief judge or the contest chair prior to the contest. This helps them to ensure that you're eligible to compete, and it also allows for a more efficient contest. The second form is the contestant profile form. This form provides biographical information about the speaker and is used by the contest master for the interview portion of the contest, which is held during ballot counting. 
It is a way for the audience to get to know the contestants better. If you're competing in an evaluation contest, you'll be provided the evaluation contestant notes form and you'll be given five minutes to complete your notes after the test speaker is finished. You are allowed to ask for as many of these forms as you feel you need to adequately document your notes. For an in-person contest, the notes will be turned in to the Sergeant of Arms and will be returned to the contestant when they are introduced by the contest master. The final form is the judge's ballot. Make sure you're choosing the ballot for the contest you're competing in. You can review this form to familiarize yourself with the criteria that judges will be using while evaluating your speech. Some other recommendations to help you prepare as a contestant are to attend the judge's training. This will allow you to gain further knowledge on the judging criteria. I also encourage you to watch YouTube videos of past contest winners. Now that we know who's eligible to compete in a contest, let's review speech preparation. If you are competing in an international humorous or tall tales contest, you may choose the subject of your speech. When preparing your speech, please avoid potentially objectionable language, anecdotes, and materials. The topic must be thematic in nature, meaning it has an opening, body, and conclusion, and is not a monologue. Participants at table topics contests all respond to the same question, which is chosen by the contest chair, and contestants must answer the specific question. In our club meetings, contestants may choose to answer another question, but this is not allowed in a table topics contest. To maintain original speeches, you must write your own speech, and only 25% or less of your speech can be quotes or paraphrasing of another person's speech. Any quoted, paraphrased, or reference content must be identified during the speech. A new rule added this year is that you cannot reference another contestant or a speech presented by another contestant during your speech at the same contest in which they are competing. I will now cover some general procedures of a contest. Contestants must be physically present to compete beyond the club level of a contest. If the contest is online or hybrid, meaning you have the option to participate in person or online, you can utilize remote technology but still must be present on video during the contest. Unless approved by Toastmasters International, pre-recorded videos are not permitted. During the contestant briefing, contestants will be briefed on the speaking area, which is the same for all speakers. A lectern will be available, but does not need to be used by contestant, and you may request to have it removed prior to your speech. Microphones will be available for in-person contests. If the contestant is online, the microphone is the responsibility of the contestants. Contestants are allowed to use props during their speech, and they must inform the contest chair what props they will be using. It is the contestant's responsibility to set up and remove props within the one minute of silence between speakers. Any needed equipment, such as a projector, will be available for practice for in-person contestants only. If a contestant is online, all equipment, such as cell phone, tablet, computer, internet connection, etc., are the responsibility of the contestant. If special setup of the speaking ear is needed, the request must be made in advance of the contest to the contest chair. All contestants will be briefed on the rules by the contest chair. If the contestant arrives after the briefing, but before the contest master is introduced, the contestant may compete provided one, the contestant reports to the contest chair upon their arrival, Two, has all the required paperwork in good order before the contest master is introduced. And three, they waive the opportunity of a briefing. During the briefing, the contestants will also draw for speaking order. Visually impaired contestants can request to use another method of signaling. If an alternate device is needed, the contestant is responsible for providing the needed device. Protests are limited to eligibility, originality, and reference to another contestant's speech. These protests are limited to voting judges and or contestants only. 
Per the contest rule book, any protest must be lodged with the chief judge prior to the contest being adjourned. However, best practice would be for the contestant to lodge a protest immediately. For protests of originality, the contestant must be given the opportunity to respond to the voting judges. After hearing the contestant's response, the majority of voting judges must agree on the decision to disqualify. All decisions by the voting judges are final. International humor speeches must be from five to seven minutes. A contestant is disqualified if the speech is less than four minutes, 30 seconds, or more than seven minutes, 30 seconds. Table topic speeches must be from one to two minutes. A contestant is disqualified if the speech is less than one minute or more than two minutes, 30 seconds. Evaluation speeches are two to three minutes. And the speaker is disqualified if the speech is less than one minute, 30 seconds, and more than three minutes, 30 seconds. Finally, for contestants in contests where they are sequestered, table topics and evaluations, those contestants must not use digital or other devices to gain an unfair advantage. I hope you found this training informative and please watch for other contest training videos. Before we conclude, I want to remind you this training is meant to be a high level overview for contestants of a speech contest. To ensure you have a clear understanding of all the contest rules, please thoroughly review the 2022-2023 Speech Contest Rulebook, item number 1171, available on the Toastmasters International website. I look forward to our upcoming question and answer session to answer any additional questions you may have.